Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue uh, solving uh, trigonometric inequalities. Um, they are not very difficult. There are three of them which I would like to, to talk about today. Uh, so, well, let's just uh, try to do it. Uh, I, I'm sure you tried to solve it themselves first. Uh, do it just, just by yourself, thinking about these equations, inequalities, it's very important. So, um, regardless of the fact whether you have solved them correctly or not, so let's just examine what I, what I consider might be a good solution. All right, the first one. Sine of x plus cosine of x less than square root of 2. Okay. Um, obviously, we can do it in many different ways. Um, I think what this particular problem actually um, is trying to make a point, before solving anything like straight without any, any thinking, like you can just um, uh, draw a graph of this function, sine of x, cosine of x, add them together, get some curve basically and try to maybe resolve the uh, uh, equation when this is equal to square root of 2. It, yes, you can do it this way. But obviously it would help if some uh, very simple transformation would, would help you to simplify uh, this particular inequality. So, how to simplify it? Um, well, in this particular case, um, I don't know, this square root of 2 actually kind of reminds me something. It reminds me that square root of 2 over 2 is a cosine and a sine of pi over 4. And if I will multiply by square root of 2 over 2, left and right part, um, it looks like I'm multiplying by sine and cosine, and that would look like a formula for a cosine of the difference between x and pi over 4, right? So I multiply left and right part by square root of 2 over 2, but since it's the same, so instead of square root of 2 over 2 with the sine of x, I will put sine of pi over 4, and instead of square root of 2 over 2 with the cosine, I will put cosine of pi over 4. And then it will be cosine of x times cosine of pi over 4 plus sine of x and sine of pi over 4, which is the formula for cosine of the difference between x and pi over 4. So, cosine of x minus pi over 4 less than 1, right? Now, cosine is always less than or equal to 1, and at what particular points the cosine is equal to 1, which we have to exclude, actually, from the solutions? Well, remember, the cosine is abscissa, right? So, cosine is abscissa, and the cosine is equal to 0 at the angle equal to 0, plus 2pm, right? So, x minus pi over 4 should not be equal to 2 pi m, where m is any integer number, because these 2 pi m is exactly this particular angle, which means that x should not be equal to pi over 4 plus 2 pi m, where n is any integer number, and any other x but this one would satisfy the inequality. That's it. So, again, the trick is to multiply both parts by this expression. Uh, just, you know, think about this. If you have sine and cosine in this particular combination, it might actually be helpful to, to multiply it by square root of 2 over 2, which gives you uh, a little bit simpler formula, basically. Second one. Sine of 2 pi 
cosine of x greater than 0. Well, this is kind of a complicated thing, so you cannot really like immediately come up with, uh, with the solution, even, even, even graphically, quite frankly. Um, I never actually attempted to draw a, a graph of function like this one. However, however, we do know how to solve this particular inequality, right? So we can convert condition on a sign into condition on, on the y. Well, in this case, y is this. So when exactly the sign is uh, positive? Well, sign is ordinate, right? Remember. So these angles, they all have positive ordinate. So it's from 0 uh, to pi, plus 2 pi n on both sides. So these are conditions for the angle uh, sufficient for its sign to be positive. So this is exactly the condition which we would like to impose on whatever we have under the sign, whatever the argument to a sign is. So what I want to say is that 2 pi cosine of x should be less than 2 pi n and greater than uh, pi plus 2 pi n. pi plus 2 pi n. And this is 2 pi n. Right? Well, obviously we should reduce by 2 pi. It's a positive, so everything is fine. Pi over 2 plus n. Right? That's, that's what we have. Uh, sorry, that's one half we reduced by 2 pi. We divided by 2 pi, so it's n. This is the cosine, this is 1 half, and this is n. All right, now, this is basically a condition equivalent to this one. We did not really lose anything, we did not add anything. So instead of solving the original equation, we will solve this. And by the way, this should be Simultaneous, so it should be like intersection of two intervals or more intervals, whatever it is. All right, so let's wipe out this and consider this to be my my problem. Now let's think about it. cosine is a restricted function. It's from minus one to one. So n cannot be very big positive or very small negative um, value, because the cosine would be outside of this range. Now, can n be, for instance, minus 2? If this is minus 2, this is minus 1 and a half, cosine cannot be less than minus 1 and a half, right? Because of this. Now, can n be minus 1? It's minus 1, and this is minus 1 half. That's possible. So one of the things is where we should look for a solution is this. Can n be equal to 0? Well, yes, because it will be from 0 to 1 half, which is also good. From 0 to 1 half, it's possible. Can n be equal to 1? No, because 1 and 1 and a half cosine will not be in between these two values. So basically, we have reduced our inequality original to two independent solutions, solutions to this and solution to this. All right? Well, that's kind of easy, right? So let's just solve them. Um, for uh, the first one, well, let's consider the graph. That would be easier.
So this is 0, this is pi over 2, this is pi, this is minus pi over 2, and this is minus pi. Now we also have minus 1 half and 1 half, so this is 1, 1 and minus 1, 1 half is here. Okay, let's consider the first one. The first one is from minus 1 to minus 1 half. Now, minus 1 to minus 1 half seems to be like this is minus 1 half. So it's this particular area and this particular area. Right? So, what is the value of x if cosine is equal to minus 1 half? Well, that's uh, uh, pi minus uh, pi over 3, am I right? Now, cosine of pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, is equal to 1 half, right? Cosine of 60 degrees and sine of 30 degrees are 1 half. Now, um, when I'm changing from uh, pi over 3 to pi minus pi over 3, now obviously, if this is pi over 3, this is pi minus uh, pi over 3. And abscissa would be the same by absolute value, but negative. So we need minus 1 half. So that would be um, minus 1 half. So this particular point is pi minus pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. Now this point correspondingly is minus 2 pi over 3 because cosine is an even function. And these are obviously minus pi and minus pi. So the solution to the first one uh, is it, to, to, to make cosine from minus 1 to minus 1 half, we have to make x from minus pi to minus 2 pi over 3. Am I right? Looks like I'm right. And from 2 pi over 3 to pi. This is this area. And obviously I should add 2 pi n to both sides. So these intervals are solutions to the first one. Okay, now solutions to the second one, from 0 to 1 half. Um, so from 0 to 1 half, so it's, it's this. From 0 to 1 half, it's this piece and this piece. The cosine would be from 0, greater than 0, but less than 1 half, right? So what are these intervals? Well, 0 is obviously minus pi over 2 and minus over 2. And, uh, uh, and 1 half would be pi over 3 and minus pi over 3. Right? Because the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. So in this particular case, we have from minus pi over 2 to pi to minus pi over 3, from minus pi over 2 to minus pi over 3, and from pi over 3 to pi over 2. That's this piece. 
And again, I should use 2 pi n in both cases. So, these are four different groups of intervals. Now, why groups? Because of this n. n is any integer number. So for any specific n, we have four intervals, which is this one, this one, this one, and this one, where this particular condition is, where regional inequality holds true, right? OK, that's it. So what did we do here? Let me just summarize it. We reduced the original quite complicated inequality into a combination of uh, simple ones. So from sine of something, sine of 2 pi cosine x, we have reduced to condition on 2 pi cosine x. And from that, we have reduced it to condition on x. So it's like two steps uh, procedure. And the third problem which I have is cosine of pi xy greater than 0. OK, now, the first um, question you might ask is, hey, we have only one inequality and two different variables. Well, that's right, which means that solutions are not expressed in uh, some kind of a inequality for x, but it should be an inequality on x and y. And how can we express it? I mean, graphically, in the previous cases, we always had some kind of interval, x from this to this, or from that to that. That's one dimensional intervals on the line. Well, this obviously is a two-dimensional um, uh, area on the plane, on the coordinate plane. Question is, how does it look? So. My purpose right now is basically expressed it not only um, analytically, and analytically to express it, 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 it's very easy. The cosine is positive, uh, as, as you understand from, um, here is the graph. So this is 1, this is minus pi over 2, and this is pi over 2. Right, so cosine goes like this. So it's positive between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, and plus 2 pi n, obviously, right? So I can very easily express the condition on x and y by basically saying that pi x, y should be from pi over 2 plus 2 pi n to minus pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, right? But what is it? Uh, I mean, uh, in case of intervals, you, you just see, OK, any x which, um, which belongs to this interval is a solution. Now, which pairs of x and y belong to this particular solution? Well, for instance, x and y equal to 0 does fit, OK, but what else? So we better express it graphically. So my point is right now, you cannot really express it analytically better than this one. I mean, obviously, you can just resolve it for y or for x or whatever. But um, it's, it does not really give you the feeling of what exactly the solution is. That's why I would like to approach it graphically. All right? So um, how can we approach it graphically? I suggest we slightly change this. Well, first of all, we obviously can reduce it by pi. So I will have xy between minus 1 half and 1 half. Um, xy between 1 half plus uh, n and minus 1 half plus, no, 2n, sorry, 2n. Now, for every n, we have its own area of x and y, you see? Let's say for n is equal to 0, we have x, y from minus half to half. Now, what is it? Well, let's just think about it. 
let's put n is equal to 0 first. Now, our uh, x, y is from minus 1 half to 1 half. Now, how is it, how does it look graphically? Well, let's think about it. Let's build the first one. X, Y less than one half. Well, let's build Y is, let, let's build X, Y equals to one half. That probably divides the whole plane into two parts, where it's less than uh, one half and where it's equal to one half. And the division point is where it's equal to one, uh, where it's equal, right? So this is uh, hyperbola, right? Because for positive x, we can say um, we can say y is equal to one half of one x, right? Now y is equal to one x is just a hyperbola. One half is just slightly. Uh, squeezed down uh, by uh, now and on, on the negative side it's this, right? So these are two pieces of the curve which supposed to divide the whole area into the whole plane into areas where x, y greater than one half and less than one half. So um, in this particular area, let's say take 0, 0. 0, 0 is obviously less than 1 half. So the whole area which is in between these two is less than 1 half. Uh, here, uh, x, y would be greater than 1 half, and here it would be also greater than 1 half. So that's how we have divided our plane into different areas, right? Now, what about x, y greater than minus one half? Well, again, first of all, let's draw y is equal to minus one half of one x. Now, that would be this, right? These two curves represent this particular graph. And now we need Again, how does it divide the area? Well, same thing. Point zero zero is greater. So in this particular case, again, point zero zero, which is in between these two, belongs to the area where x y is greater than one than minus one half. And whatever is outside, this is x x y would be less than minus one half. This would be x, y, will be less than minus 1. So what I want to say is that this particular combination of these two uh, inequalities is this diamond kind of shape. Well, I mean, it's obviously not a diamond because it's infinite in both cases. Uh, in, in all four sides, actually, it's infinite. It's uh, asymptotically um, approaching the axis. But it still looks like a diamond, basically, right? So that's what it is. This is this particular area, which is represented by this particular um, two, two inequalities, when x, y is greater than minus one half and, and less than one half. It's this area in between these four lines. OK, fine. That's done for n is equal to 0. Let's move on. Okay, so, so far we have this particular piece of the plane as a solution to our uh, initial inequality. Now, let's move on with n. Let's say n is equal to, to 1, all right? So when n, n is equal to 1, I have here 
uh, 2 minus, so it's 1 and a half. So 1 and 1 half xy uh, less than xy less than 2 and 1 half, right? What is this? Well, again, let's build two curves. First, xy is equal to 1 and a half, and then we will take whatever is greater. Now, what's the difference between this, which is actually y is equal to 1 and a half times 1x? What's different from this? This, if you remember, was 1 half times x, times 1, 1 over x. And this is 1 and a half. So it's higher, basically. So if uh, original was an, a, a standard hyper hyperbola, y is equal to 1 over x squeezed down by the factor of 2, then this one would be uh, uh, stretched up by a factor of 1 and a half. So it would be higher. It's always higher than this one. And what we are looking for is values which are greater than this one, which is this one. Now, similarly, with a negative x, it would be this, and the area would be this. Now, how about 2 and a half? It should be less than 2 and a half. So that would be the coefficient would be 2 and a half and would be probably even, uh, I mean, hyperbola even higher than that. But now the condition is less than. So combination of these two would be area in between these two hyperbolas. So this is not a solution. So in addition to this diamond kind of thing, we have a stripe from 1.5 xy to 2.5 xy. Now, obviously, if we increase n, we will have, for n is equal to 2, uh, we will have what? 3.5 and 4.5, right? So it will be even higher. So again, two stripes will be added. It will be here and here, etc. So I will add stripes. Now, with a negative n, uh, I will have, let's say, minus 1. If it's minus 1, so it would be, what, uh, minus 2.5, uh, and, and this is minus 1.5. Well, obviously, it would be stripes on this side. So in addition to this diamond kind of area, uh, which is the result of this thing with n is equal to 0, I will have additional stripes. These stripes would be added as n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., positive. And these stripes would be added as n is equal to minus 1, minus 2, minus 2. So the combination of all of them is this type of uh, geometrical area, diamond-like in, in, in the middle, and then stripes around it. But all of these stripes are asymptotically um, tend to uh, axis, so they are narrow, narrower and narrower as we go either to the right or, uh, or to the bottom or to the left or to the up, right? So that's basically how this area which represents the solution to the original inequality looks like. Well, it might be a little, you know, complicated. I don't know, but uh, but I think this graphical representation really helps you to um, to better feel what exactly all these inequalities are. And don't get scared by the fact that you have two variables and only one inequality. It just means that the result would be a two-dimensional area on the plane rather than one-dimensional interval or a set of intervals. Um, on the line. Well, that's it. I do recommend you to go through these problems again, just by yourself. Um, and uh, don't forget that everything is on unizor.com, where the whole educational process actually can be utilized by you. And uh, uh, it has exams for registered students. 
uh, your supervisors or your parents can uh, uh, enroll you into different topics, can uh, consider and mark these topics as completed if the exams which you did, uh, which you took, are passed to their satisfaction, etc. So again, um, try to do it yourself as much as possible, all these problems, uh, before you uh, listen to lectures like this. And uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.